I'm here with actor Rafi Barzumian, who is currently starring on The Code. Yes. Uh, before we talk about your latest endeavor, let's talk a little bit about your um, journey as an actor. Sure. When did you first decide you wanted to do it? I know that you moved to California when you were pretty young, right? Well, my family moved to California when I was one, so yeah. I grew so, up yeah, in California. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't uh, get much younger than yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I grew up uh, outside of Los Angeles, so it's all it's kind of in the air there. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I started to want to do it fairly early, just sort of... I loved movies, you know, um, my dad used to take us to movies and it was just always a good, you know, I always look forward to that. So I think that sort of desire to be part of storytelling uh, got into me pretty young. Mm -hmm. um, and, then, and then slowly I, I started to like dip my toe into it as a teenager, but it really like happened when I went to college and mm -hmm. was like, okay, this is what I'm going to study. This is what I want to commit to. So. I've, I've always had a love for it. I mean, I think it was eight when I was like, I'm going to be an actor. And somehow it stuck. <laughs> <laughs> so now when you went to school, you were very heavily focused on theater. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was the, um, did you have a specific um, journey in mind? I hate to keep using that word, but did, in terms of, did you want to just do dramas? Were you looking to do like uh, comedy and theater, that kind of thing? Or were you such a, I'm going to be a dramatic actor? Well, honestly, I, I, went to theater school because I loved movies and I was like looking at my favorite actors and I saw that a lot of them had extensive theater backgrounds mm -hmm. and so I was like, oh, maybe that's something I should look into. So I went, I got into a great school and I started going to school and I think that's where I discovered, oh, this is a whole separate world, a fascinating, rich mm -hmm. um, place for an actor to learn, grow, uh, be a storyteller. Um, and so in school, I think, is where that journey began. I was woefully behind my classmates and sort of my knowledge of theater. And, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a tough program, so you catch up quick. And, and, I, and that's where I fell in love with it. And, and because of that, I think that sent me on a different journey than I think where I came into school with, where mm -hmm. I was thinking, okay, I'll, I'll do this training and then I'll go and try and get into Hollywood and, yeah. and and then there I was like oh no there is great artistry in theater and I want to explore that some more so I went off and found theater jobs wherever I could and and did a lot of Shakespeare and yeah you and, found a lot of theater jobs and a lot of interesting uh, ways that you were going about performing it absolutely yeah yeah I mean I, I mean I after um, after my undergrad I went to another school which was all about physical theater I got really interested in physical storytelling and um, you know stories that are mm, expressed silently uh, without even text, which I found some of the most moving theatrical experiences I'd had um, were that kind of thing. And so um, I just wanted to explore as much of it as possible, get as many tools under my belt, you know. And, yeah. Yeah. Some people might think, oh, well, that's not, doesn't take very much talent to just sit there and not do any text. But no. <laughs> it's probably the exact opposite <laughs> yeah. if you think about it. Absolutely. It, how much harder was it for you doing theater that there were no words for and conveying everything through? your physicality. You know, I think it's just a different mindset. You know, um, when you're an actor who is trained as I think we are here in the States through text, um, you know, you're looking, the word is the conduit. So you're looking mm -hmm. at, um, that's your entrance point. You know that these, this is what I have to express the story. Mm -hmm. So when you're approaching something where, okay, uh, you've got five minutes, 10 minutes, and you need a beginning, middle, and end, but there are no words, or if there are words, they're only the necessary words. Um, you're just approaching creating, uh, constructing the story, I should say, mm -hmm. uh, in a different way because you can't hide behind words or you can't say like, um, you can't use the word to propel the action. It's mm -hmm. maybe it's a look, it's a gesture, it's a it's a spatial relationship. It's a whole different kind of language. Did you have interactions with the audiences after performances and and have them give feedback or you know since it was probably a different experience going in? Oh no, I, I avoid that audience. I think you at all times. I'm scared of their feedback. You won't see feedback. him at the stage door, everyone. <laughs> uh, I, I run away and yeah. hide, yeah. <laughs> Autograph labels are very hard to come by for yeah, yeah. Rafa's signature. <laughs> we'll have to rectify that. Uh, so what were some of the most challenging roles that you played? I know you said you did a lot of Shakespeare. Mm. And what was your most rewarding in terms of theater? Challenging. Um, you know, I think each one of them brings its own challenge. You know, with, uh, I have gotten the opportunity to work on a lot of Shakespeare, and I, f I find each time with those, uh, you know, you're you're climbing a mountain there. Mm -hmm. You know, because there is just the text to grapple with, and how do I how do I not only um, learn this and make it my own, but how do I then transmit it to an audience and have them go on that journey with me? So that's right. all. You know, a lot of the Shakespeare stuff that I've done have been incredibly challenging. Um, I think one of the more uh, I did a 
a beautiful, beautiful play um, called Guards at the Taj a few years ago at the Geffen Theater, and mm -hmm. I think that was one of the more rewarding theater experiences I've had. Um, also, deeply challenging on a different level, um, physically as well as uh, um, it was a two-hander, so it was just two of us on yeah. stage for an hour and a half. Uh, the story was in our hands, but a gorgeous, gorgeous story, um, and a really nice one to get to live every night. Now that you've kind of segued a little bit into television, I know you were um, a recurring cast member on The Vampire Diaries. Sure. And now obviously with the code, I know the not having an audience gives it a different feel. Mm. Um, do you feed off that interaction with the audience to make your performance go, not in a certain direction, like you put more energy in, but like you always had to do the same part, but for different audiences, so you're catering to like a whole new crowd every night. Yeah, sure. I mean, I suppose, you're in a, a, a specific kind of conversation in, in theater every night. You know, you're trying to um, spark uh, that moment where everybody's sort of like leaning in and listening, or going on the journey with you in whatever way that might be. Whether it's um, by eliciting their laughter or, or or quieting them down so that they, you know, are hit with a particularly mm -hmm. poignant moment. So um, that a nightly aliveness, yes, it's not doesn't exist in let's say. Um, on camera work, but you know the on camera world is is um, I'm still learning a lot about it, yeah. and I don't think what I think it affords you is actually um, because the camera then becomes your audience, and so you're sort of trying to uh, let's say there isn't direct feedback there, but you are still trying to take that in. You're trying to say, okay, this is the this is who I'm telling the story to, mm -hmm. and so that comes that there is a conversation there in a different way that you're having plus also I think it's what I've been learning is it's fun to just you know you know that there's a scene between you and your partner and then you get to just mm -hmm. live and play in that yeah. um, and, and and you know there is you have all your walls yeah. you know so you're not having to like check in constantly with an audience right, to see right. oh are they on the journey with us it's 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 so now if, I, if I read between the lines, that means Paul Wesley and Ian Somerhalder will, were not clapping for you after the Yeah, show. oh yeah. Uh, is, yeah that, they, is that what you're uh, saying? Standing ovations supported? after yeah. every scene. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about that um, role and, and what that, that brought you into onto a show that had a massive, massive fan following. Oh yeah. You went on in a season where it was already an established show. So oh yeah. You were going in hot. Um, <laughs> What was the experience uh, like working on that show, especially, and did you know that you were going to be continuing for the amount of episodes when you were initially booked it? Yes, uh, yeah, I was sort of told it was going to be a, a kind of a six episode arc. Mm -hmm. That's what I went into, that's what we did. Um, yeah, it's interesting, CW fans are hardcore, they love, like they fall in love with these shows mm -hmm. and they, uh, they want to know everything about them and that was an interesting thing to encounter, you know. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I think I mostly stayed out of it. It was such a, it was my first time as a recurring, and so I was preoccupied with that and just trying to do a good job and, and, and also learn, you know, learn how a set works, learn how, um, uh, what skills from the theater I could bring mm -hmm. in, what I needed to set aside. So um, that was where my focus was. It, yeah, it was, a, it was thrilling. I mean, they are, they love uh, these worlds and yeah. they loved those characters. It, it is interesting walking into a, a show that had been running four or five seasons that by the time I came on, I mean, it's a well-oiled machine by the time you're, you come on and so you are um, sort of a, the tourist, you know, you're, yeah. uh, you're, uh, you're having to learn their ways and like find a way to integrate into what they've already built and the rhythms mm -hmm. they already have, so it's since, interesting. Since you were on for six episodes, were you filming and airing at the same time or were you already done filming by the time you aired? Oh gosh, I don't even remember. I mean, I remember we did like a three, four month period of uh, shooting it. I think we aired after I finished. I yeah, think. I was going to ask because I know a lot of uh, sets for the Vampire Diaries were pretty open to the public, and they would get a lot of people. Well, yeah, I mean, checking out. But you probably got that experience just because you were filming on the show. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think one of the first days that I was shooting, we were doing a exterior and they shoot in this really cute little town mm -hmm. out in Georgia. And um, it was a small town and, and people find out. They're like, oh, they know where they're shooting. Mm -hmm. They will drive hundreds of miles to come and just stand far away behind like the police tape to, <laughs> to watch yeah. them shoot and do the show. And that was like, whoa, bizarre. Cause also like I showed up as an exterior, big moving cameras, lots of extras, plus that audience on the other side, you know, really right. excited to see Ian or, you know, Paul. Uh, it was it was fun. That's awesome. Yeah. 
So then after that was over, you did a, a shorter arc on Shameless, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, it was, I think, a, a two-episode mm -hmm. pop-in. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you go back into theater uh, in between? Oh, lots. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think after, yeah, I mean, I, I worked at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival several mm -hmm. seasons, so I think I did a season of that after Vampire Diaries. And, uh, I've come out here in New York and I've done some shows at the public and mm -hmm. um, I got to do my first Broadway show a couple of years ago. So, what yeah. was that like? Uh, exciting. You know, I always say it's not, you know, I was, I was delighted to discover that Broadway is um, technically the same as doing theater anywhere else. Mm -hmm. It's still the job is the job. It's just the dressing is a lot fancier <laughs> and the parties are very nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. so, <laughs> not quite the same as regional. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Now let's talk about the code. Yeah. Um, when you when you went in, did you go in specifically for the role that you were cast in, or did you go in for? No, yeah, I went in for for this part. It was it had a different name at the time, and and uh, that changed when they offered me the role. And, but yes, it was for this specific part. Uh, what I can tell from sitting across from you now that you kind of have a little bit of scruff going <laughs> is you probably can pass for a number of nationalities. Has yeah. that helped in, in scoring some roles? Yeah, I think, you know, it's an interesting time for uh, uh, actors like me who have, let's, uh, you know, regional ambiguity, let's mm -hmm. say, or even specificity, you know, uh, things are opening up, people want that kind of diversity. Um, you know, it's always a fine line of you don't want that to be your defining characteristic, but right. certainly it helps in terms of standing out for certain parts that they want a particular look for or they want that element. You know, like I think for Vampire Diaries it helped essentially because my character was somebody who was coming from an ancient world. And so, with this face. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, You're saying you look ancient? Yeah, well, very ancient. <laughs> you were bearded, or you had a facial hair in that show. I, yeah, you? I was bearded, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so let's talk more about the code. Yeah. Um, your character is kind of the Girl Friday, I guess you would call what it. What is a Girl to, Friday? To Luke yeah. Mitchell, the movie His Girl Friday. Uh, like I, the, I don't know the reference. You don't know that uh. reference, sorry. <laughs> you're a paralegal, you play a paralegal I on do, the yeah. show. Uh, and you, you're basically, your scenes are, from what we've seen so far, are with Luke and, mm -hmm. you know, in the office setting. Sure. Talk a little bit about where your character goes uh, in as so far as as much as you can say without Giving away a sure. Yeah, I, you know the 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 character uh, lives in this wonderful um, place mm -hmm. in 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 this particular world because he is not a trial lawyer. Uh, he is a paralegal level mm -hmm. um, marine judge advocate, and so his domain is the office. And uh, you know, originally when I started exploring the part, and you know, he's a, he's a warrant officer who is. In, in the Marines is a sort of a specialist, somebody with a, an extensive amount of knowledge in a specific field, uh, a technician of some sort. And so I thought, okay, what's that in the judge advocates and how does somebody so young become a specialist so fast? Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, this guy, guy must be incredibly intelligent and, and very on top of his game. And so um, I've had a great time sort of exploring uh, uh, his positioning in that in the, particularly in the office, how he owns that space and mm -hmm. sort of um, has taken on a, 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 a guardianship maybe of the yeah. office and the others. I mean, right now you see him a lot in, in um, partnership with Luke, but he does uh, sort of take care of the whole team. Mm -hmm. And throughout the course of the season, you'll see a, a how also the team rallies around him as, as he runs into some difficulty. And uh, it's, it's lovely. It's lovely how they built um, him sort of as a sidekick to the team and then how they embrace him mm -hmm. and you realize how integral he is to their functioning as well. What other preparation uh, did you do in terms of you know for the role did you yeah like study our legal like what they would do or yeah. <laughs> it's kind of different because it's a military situation yeah. did you did you look into what someone would do would be doing in that role? Absolutely, yeah, you, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's two very specific worlds. It's the world of the Marines, mm -hmm. and then it's also uh, the courtroom world, and uh, neither of which I had a great deal of knowledge about, you know. Um, so it was a lot about uh, understanding, um, first of all, how the Marines work in terms of like rank structure, mm -hmm. such a fascinating thing, and like where he falls into that because that will tell you a lot about their history of where they studied, what they studied, how they trained to become, mm -hmm. to get where they are. And then on top of that, you're realizing, oh, these guys not only went through the incredibly grueling process of becoming 
fighting Marines, they also then went to law school right. and, and uh, understand the law and learned, um, you know, all of that mm -hmm. on, to on top of it. So, <laughs> so trying to understand um, both of those worlds, so we just, you know, I was doing a lot, we got some books recommended to us. I read this fantastic book, which is an account of uh, a Marine in this time in Iraq mm -hmm. uh, during the invasion. And uh, that was a big eye opener uh, because he goes through sort of his process of um, boot camp and uh, going through officer candidate school and, and it like really brought home what an intense thing it is to actually earn the title of Marine. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah. It is incredible. Um, and, then, and then the big questions were like, okay, how does this apply? What is my function in the office? What does it mean to be a paralegal level Marine judge advocate? And, mm -hmm. um, and for that, luckily, while we were on set, we had a couple of uh, Marine liaisons. One was a retired um, uh, Marine who was sort of for any, let's say when we were out in the field or any... Um, uniform questions or anything like that and then we had an actual uh, Marine who was actually a judge advocate come mm -hmm. in and help out with a lot of the legal stuff and so I was just bombarding them with questions yeah. <laughs> what I like about you and I'm only kind of getting the sense now that I'm speaking to you yeah. based on seeing you on the code is that you can tell that you're a theater actor yeah. <laughs> but then when you watch you portraying your character on the code you kind of fit into the the whole Good looking, like sweet, you know, supporting character, lead character, but supporting of you, you know yeah. the lead. You, it seems like there's a seamless transition yeah. for me watching the show and and speaking to you in person. Thank so you. do you feel like you are more comfortable now doing television? It certainly has helped. I mean, I think uh, even back then when I did the Vampire Diaries, just having four months, you know, any anything you need some time to like. Mm -hmm. uh, sink your teeth into, you know, and doing uh, a couple of guest stars that I'd done, you know, you, you get like a day here and a day there and you're like, right. oh, that was a nice taste. Um, and so like having those four months on Vampire Diaries really like helped me understand how it works. This was that times a million, you know, just because we shot for five, six months and you know, you're, you know, you're going in every week. Mm -hmm. And so you're not only figuring out how physically how a set operates and who does what, but you're getting that comfort with the camera to understand um, what you need to bring uh, to it, and you know, yeah, I'm surrounded by incredible actors, so I'm just watching them and being like, "Oh, that's what they're doing. I'm gonna steal some of that," you know. So it, it helps. Now, you guys recently wrapped filming for the first season. Yeah. Now that you are on a bit of a hiatus, waiting to hear the future of yeah. the show, uh, would you are you gonna pursue and, and possibly put your own work up here in New York? Oh, uh, um, put my own work up. I, I don't know about that, but I definitely am always uh, looking for. Um, other fun opportunities to be a part of, particularly in the theater. You know, New York is such a great town for theater, and it's it's nice to get to um, be a working actor in that way in this city. Mm -hmm. uh, so whatever time allows, you know, I, yeah, we're always looking, or, or you know, branch out in small projects that can happen uh, yeah. in the time that we have. So, do you have a hesitation about doing your own? Like mounting your own show? Uh, I mean, I would love to. I think the organizational aspects are daunting. You know, yeah, so that's yeah, my yeah. only hesitation. Is like, do I really want to? <laughs> be in charge of it you know I, I i love being an actor and i love mm -hmm. being a storyteller and uh so anything that facilitates that absolutely i mean i you know you you do as an actor you know you do have to find ways to fill that downtime between mm -hmm. jobs and and make it constructive so that you don't feel like mm, you're rotting away for, right. <laughs> for lack of a better word, word. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah you know i find ways to like keep myself engaged um and, and do my own stuff on the side. While you were filming, what were some of the things you did in your downtime to, since you didn't have as much of it while yeah. you were filming? You... Uh, honestly, I, I feel like I was pretty preoccupied with it. You know, they send you these chunkies. I, that's why. That's my amazement is like I'm I'm looking at uh, Luke, our lead, and Anna and Otto and Dana who who are working practically daily, and they've got these chunky monologues, and I'm like, how are you processing it? Because I, you know, I get a couple of scenes in an episode, and they're like dense jargon filled pieces of things so i'm at home drilling those things on a daily basis yeah. just to like give it that feeling of um you know to feel like i belong in that world right. so uh so maybe i'll get faster as i go along <laughs> <laughs> well what do you do in your downtime to kind of relax uh, and zone out for read watch lots of netflix yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, interesting that you bring that up there's you know there's a lot of opportunities now with shows on netflix yeah do you have any um would you like to do comedy since you've done mostly series? Uh, you know, I'm open to uh, all sorts of work. You know, mm -hmm. I, I feel like I'm in that place where um, I, I'm still trying to like test the borders of yeah. what I 
can do, uh, you know, and I think the only way to do that is throw yourself at challenging stuff. I know um, there are things that scare me, and, and so, you know, logic says, like, go at that, you mm -hmm. know, because that will hopefully expand expands things. So, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in doing all sorts of genres, and um, I'd love to do a Western is really what I'd love to do. <laughs> you, you could do a Western podcast. A friend of mine had a Western oh, really? podcast that he did. Yeah, one yeah but you don't get to ride horses in a Western podcast. Yeah, <laughs> true. Well, you could. It just yeah. won't be seen. Yeah. <laughs> Robbie, thank you so much for taking the time to meet up with me. It's been a real pleasure. My pleasure. I Thanks, wish you Frank. continued success and looking forward to see what's coming up on the code. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you.